Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video, I'll show you how to connect a wireless handheld throttle to the Engine Driver app. The Engine Driver app has already featured in a couple of my videos. Quite some time ago, I showed you how to connect it to JMRI and more recently, I connected it directly to the DTC-X system. I'll put links to both those videos in the description below. I really like Engine Driver. It's a fantastic app. It's got loads of features and it's free. But I've had quite a few people come back to me and say that a touchscreen throttle really isn't for them. They prefer to have something in their hands that they can touch and feel and control their locomotives that way. And I totally understand that touchscreen throttles aren't for everyone, but physical throttles are often expensive and usually need wires to connect them to the layout. But what I'm about to show you might give you the best of both worlds. You're still using the engine driver app, but with a handheld throttle. And it's at least another option to consider. I've got my DCC-X system here connected to the rolling road with my Rapido DCC sound fitted 16 inch Hunterlet ready to go. I've got the engine driver app connected to the DCC-X Wi-Fi network just like I did in the DCC-X video. So if I turn on the sounds and move the throttle we can see that that all works. Now I'm going to add in the handheld controller. This is an R1 Bluetooth virtual reality controller. They cost around £10 on Amazon or eBay. This one's been fully charged up using the USB connection and the first thing we need to do is turn it on using the switch on the side. Then in the device running the engine drive wrap, we need to go into the Bluetooth settings and connect to the controller. And you can see here that mine's already connected. Go back into the engine drive wrap and click the three dots in the top right hand corner to open the menu. Go to preferences, tick the box at the top to show the less common preferences. Scroll down to the gamepad slash USB preference section. Click on the gamepad USB type and you can see that the app is compatible with quite a few different controllers, but here in the middle is the R1 device that I've got, so I've selected that. The next thing to do is to ensure the controller is in game mode and on this device you have to hold down the mode button and press B. Now in the app, if we click on test gamepad settings now and start making inputs on the controller, then we should see the corresponding inputs appear on the screen. On this controller, we've got up, down, left and right on the joystick, A, B, C, D function buttons, plus a couple of buttons on the front as well. So now let's try to control our model. Go back into the throttle screen for the locomotive and enter a command on the controller. The system will automatically test that the unit is functioning by asking you to input all the main controls. So if we press up, down, left, right, and A, B, C, D, we get the test complete message and we can now drive the loco. By default, function A activates the lights, B is the whistle or horn, C is the stop button, and D turns the sounds on and off. All of these are customizable and I'll show you how later. Pressing up on the joystick increases the speed and as you can see, everything appears to be working. If you go back into the gamepad preferences, there's plenty of scope to customize how the controller works. You can change the sensitivity of the throttle, change the volume of the gamepad button sounds, and map any function to any of the 10 inputs this controller has. Some controllers have more than 10 inputs, so that's why there are some grayed out options. Then at the bottom, you've got some more options relating to double pressing the stop button, swapping directions, and the options for testing the controller. So it's all very flexible. So there we go, a cheap wireless handheld controller for people who prefer to push buttons rather than swipe screens. It does have some limitations though, it's not as responsive as turning the dial on an analog controller. You've only got access to the functions that you can map to the buttons. And unless you can see the app, you don't know what speed step you're on, for example. Also, you've got to keep the thing charged up, but the battery does last a fairly long time. So there we go, a bit of a compromise, but something you might want to consider. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Special thanks to all the members and patrons for their support. It's very much appreciated. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.